give us a drive to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
you know, what are you doing talking about my divorce? It's none of your business and on and on. It's public record. It's out there. It's a legitimate question. How can you devote your attention to your job if you've got this, you know, public profile event over your head? So he, it's been that way for years. And I think Roger just got tired of him. Do you see him going anyplace else? He's got a champion's provisional. Um, Kevin Buckler would probably take him into 71 car. Um, Buckler needs a sponsor. If you've got a former champion and you can go to a sponsor and say, listen, the guy has been, he, he has promised me he'll straighten up. We're going to keep our thumb on him. We're, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to turn him around. He will bring you good attention. He'll bring you good publicity. He'll run well for you. Let's give him a shot. He'll get a ride somewhere. I, I can't, and I may be wrong, I usually am, but I cannot see him laying out a year. Yeah. I can't see him just losing losing a year. So, His brother's got the trucks in the nationwide. Could you think he might end up going down there and trying to run for a chance? Um, it, would, it would be a step down. I don't know why he'd uh, it'd be a serious demotion. Um, I think he'd sit out a year before he went down and, and sort of went to that level. Yeah. I just don't think he'll do it. You know, he he dabbled in drag racing last year a little bit in pro stock. I think he qualified for a race or two, never n never went past a round. So I don't know if he can do that. So, but it's only, I see the thing we're forgetting is it's only been two days. Yeah. Let's give it time to play out. Yeah. But he'll find a job. I'm, he's too sure good. He he's he's too good to <laughs> to not have a job. We see a pattern here with Kurt and Kyle, and, and you know I kind of hate to bring it up with Kyle though, but but it, it it's all going along the same line. Do you think these guys, when they first got into it, were a little overrated? And, uh, and, and, and are we seeing the effects, you know, down the road here? I I think at some point in their life when they were six, seven, eight, nine years old, somebody forgot to take them out behind the barn. Okay. Uh, somehow, whether it's their mother or their father or some racetrack operator in Las Vegas, somebody forgot to tell them no. Somebody forgot to rein them in, take that race car away from you or that go-kart or whatever. Um, my daughter, for years and years and years, my daughter, who started when she was eight or nine years old, rode horses, showed horses. It was very good at it. And the rule in our house was you do your grades, you make your grades, you behave yourself, you don't get in trouble, you get the horse. The minute you get off that little path that we've set, the horse goes. Right. And we never had any trouble with her. Yeah. And she's 23 now, still riding, still doing well, and has not yet given us any trouble. I don't know that anybody took the Bush brothers by the scruff of the neck when they were again, eight, nine, ten years old, and said, this is the way it's going to be. And if it's not like this, the race cars and the go-karts and the dirt bikes or whatever, out of here. Right. Nobody ever did that. And I don't know that Joe Gibbs has done it with Kyle yet. You know, NASCAR set him down. Joe Gibbs didn't set him down at Texas. That we know of. What role you well, had NASCAR. Texas. No, NASCAR did that. NASCAR did that. Right, right. at Texas. Penske... Finally got to Kurt, but it took him six years, you know. But he's also been producing, you know, pretty decent for, for Penske. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and, and you know, I'm not going to knock Kyle. I think what he, what, he's, what he did was wrong. It was very wrong, and I think his attitude needs an adjustment. But he's also a very talented driver. How, how can, you know, think of him as a car owner. How can you kind of try to balance that to where... You know, you've got two very talented drivers, and they're acting like asses. Well, the most recent champion, who also was a car owner, at one point in his career also acted like an ass. Yeah, Tony yes, Stewart did. was not the easiest guy to deal with when he first came in. He was an IndyCar champion. He, was a, he had won outlaw races, sprint cars, midgets, dirt. Tony Stewart had done everything there was to do. Yeah. He did very well in Nationwide early on. He became a successful cup driver, and I think for a while there, Tony thought he was the king of the hill. 
and 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 it took it took a number of high profile missteps on his part to get him straightened out. And and I think Joe Gibbs dealt with Tony pretty early on. And and Tony Tony gave the media a hard time for a long time, which is okay I guess. Some <laughs> sometimes we deserve it. Um sometimes you need it. Yeah, sometimes we need it. But I think I think Joe got to Tony and maybe turned Tony around and and nobody got to Kyle and nobody got to Kurt until Roger Penske did. So Well it's interesting you mentioned that though. Uh, Kyle has had I don't even have an accurate count or even an approximation how many blow ups and bad oh. publicity things he's had. But he's dealing with the same team that Tony did dur- during his deal. What what do you think the difference is between what Tony was doing then and what Kyle's doing now? Um, I got an answer for that. Okay. Okay. Tony's dad took him out behind the shed when he was younger, and I think Tony's yeah. learned from that. You think the Bush brothers never got told that it's, it doesn't matter how many races you win, you've got to behave yourself like a human? It looks to me like they never got the message that driving a race car is a privilege. Yeah. If you're good at it, you can become incredibly wealthy mm-hmm. beyond your wildest dreams. You can become incredibly popular beyond your wildest dreams, but you can't be an ass about it. Yep. And I think Tony learned that some at some point. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, you know, the things that Tony did early in his career were they were off, they were out of the car. He apparently oh, yeah. knocked some fan around at Bristol one night and bumped her against the hauler and was mad. He he roughed up a couple of reporters, a couple of notebook, a couple of guys with tape recorders got him slapped. Anyway, so Tony had a couple of those deals. Mm-hmm. I don't know that Tony's on track stuff was as bad as what Kyle's done. No, and it, it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, no. Kyle Rick Jr. at Richmond, Kyle wrecked his brother in the All-Star race one year. That was my, by the way, that was my favorite moment in NASCAR to this point ever, <laughs> to see the two, Bush two brothers, brothers yeah. take a team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's still my favorite yeah. highlight. But, <laughs> and, and, I mean, you know, I, I told somebody today, the the the, the, the evening that, that Kyle Bush Tore up that guitar at Nashville. Oh yeah. Soured was, people on him yeah. oh, for all time. Oh yeah. They'll never get over that. No. And that, you, that you win a race, you get a you get a, a classic Sam Bass guitar, a Gibson, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And Gibson. he pulled a he pulled a a, a, a Peter Townsend deal yeah. and just smashed it on, you know, and then and then tried to say, well, I wanted all the crew to get a small piece of it. Yeah. Is there part of the trophy? Whatever. Right, exactly. Well, well now, we, now we we have, and, and Doc will verify this, we talked to Sam Bass about that. He says that was the sickest moment that I have ever had in my life. Yeah. As much Cause time and effort as he put in that. It, yeah. it was a custom made. Yeah. Right. It, it right. was not a, 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 a... No, it's not a production line. Production right. line. No. It's he all said, hand built. He said, but the thing about it was is that, that Kyle said that he would do that and give peace to, to everybody, and then he went back and ordered... He was driving for what's his name? It wasn't his team. It was still the eighteen. That's a good. That's a Gibbs car. It was. It was a Gibbs car. He got. Yeah, he, he ended up paying for three ident- uh, replicas. One for the sponsor. One for him. And one for Gibbs. Right after that, remember when we were talking to Sam about yeah, that? Yeah. The thing about it, as, it's as still, much money as he brings or makes or whatever, you get something special like that. You want to share it with right, the crew? Right. Okay, then you get. The same signature line, off the shelf. Not it doesn't have to be custom. You just buy your. Well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you know, two or three hundred bucks a pop um, for your crew and. The, the Ron Hornaday thing still that to me. Sam's special. wife is still not happy about it. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people not happy. Well, you know, when you look at it, you know, Hornaday kind of started it. Mm-hmm. Hornaday kind of, you know, you can, you can make the argument that Hornaday. Should have known better at that particular moment, at that instant in time, Hornaday was still in the championship hunt. Yeah. Not realistically, but mathematically anyway. Yeah. And you can you can say that he 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 moved up a little more. He he could have overlapped the uh, I forget what truck he was passing on the on the bottom. I don't say it was like Busher or somebody like there that. There was some was some back truck. marker, yeah, yeah, some back marker. And he, he might not have different. He didn't need to go quite as high as he did, 
and he kind of got Kyle up in the, up in the marbles, and 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 Kyle is not the kind from what we've seen. <laughs> Kyle's not the kind to retaliate nice gently. You know, you can gently move somebody. Yeah. We've seen people you move people all day. Yeah, you can do something. Right. When, when yeah. he first started tapping him, he would have spun him down to the infield, but yeah. Hornaday they kept snagging him. But yeah, he should have let him. He should have let him. Said, yeah. You're in the yeah. wall, buddy. Yeah. yeah. But along with that same deal, though, every racing series I've ever been involved with, there is a rule, and it, this, it almost goes verbatim, but the vehicle in the lead, whether it's by several inches or many feet, has the right of way. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I still, okay, yeah, Hornaday could have done things differently and left everybody room. But at the same time, Bush was still trailing. So why was he upset about the fact that Hornaday made a move? The problem yeah. Bush had at, 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 at Texas that night was when he, he, he could have hit him once and let him go. Oh, yeah. And that would have that would have been the message he needed to send. Yeah. But when he hit him the second time and the third time, and finally turned him, him in the wall. and then wrecked himself, yeah. and all the stuff about NASCAR said, "Well, we're going to park him." Nasty, did you look at the truck? I yeah. mean, yeah, you don't need to park him. Don't He's park. the trucks were already now damaged yeah. without yeah. having to. But NASCAR said, "Oh, we're going to we're going to we're going to park him because we don't like the way he's driving." Uh, uh, okay, and here here's my argument about it. We seen Tony Stewart at Homestead going four wide on starts, <laughs> passing 108 cars, doing insane things, trying to win a championship. He didn't hit anybody, did he? No. Did Warner Day hit anybody when oh, he wait, did that pass? Oh, Tony yeah. did hit somebody. He, he shoved Carl down into the corner one time just to let him know that. Yeah, okay. he oh, yeah, but but, but <laughs> now, now when Warner Day did that pass, <laughs> yeah, did he hit anybody? Bit. Well, he, he pushed Bush up into the marbles. He actually tapped. He, yeah, he, he, tapped he when he moved up, he got loose, and the, he the right rear corner tagged Bush right in the door. I got a, I got a good question for you guys. All right. Was was the Stewart Carl Edwards final race more memorable or more classic or more historic than the Bill Elliott, Alan Kowicki, Davey Allison? Um, Kyle Petty, Harry Gant race at Atlanta that Davey year. Allison. The the five guys no. going for it. I'm gonna have to. Or the two guys I'll going for it. Question because I was less than ten years old. No, <laughs> no, that will always be the five, Alan five, Kowicki. Five guys went to Atlanta. Yeah. With the chance to win the championship. I, I, I know the story. Okay. Alan, yeah. Alan, Alan Kowicki, Kyle Petty, <laughs> Davey Allison, Alan Bill Kowicki, Elliott, and Bill and, Elliott, and Bill Elliott yeah. were the five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, because you never knew. Any time during that race, who was going to win it? Well, after a while, you knew that Kyle and um, <coughs> Davy. Well, Davy wrecked Davey. while he was still running good. Right, but Kyle was out of it. Yeah, early on, and the other guy was was Gant. It Harry, was, Harry Gant. was in that group, okay. but it came down to to Kowicki ran and led one lap more than than Elliot did. Yeah, and then that's Kow what Kowicki's yeah. crew had it figured: if you run to lap. Whatever, two thirty, whatever yeah. it is, Stretching you will have led one goals. more lap yeah. than Bill can possibly lead, yeah. and that five points you get is five he won't get. Right. And there's a so everybody says, well, this is the greatest finish in NASCAR history. I don't know. Well, the it, year the year that Richard and Daryl went to went to Ontario, virtually tied in points, and Richard beat him by four spots and won it by eleven. Okay, this was a dead even tie. Yeah. But the other point is, this was a dead even tie after ten races. Yeah. That was a dead even tie after thirty six. Yeah. So yeah. everybody who says this is the greatest finish in history, it was the greatest ten race finish in history. I will say after the previous Kyle, Kyle five years. Kyle Well, yeah, but I, I will say, over the, the past five years, this year's finale was definitely more memorable. Than the previous oh, five absolutely, years. no Not, question about it. Nothing against Jimmy Johnson. No, it, and it's mind-boggling that they can win five championships in a row. Oh yeah, but at the same time, I got tired of watching him win it. No, I. I you know, well, I think I, that I, I think the Quilkey one was was probably more memorable yeah. because of the events that happened right. after it. Yeah. 
he got he got yet. five months to enjoy it. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and we lost Davy that right. year. Right, same year. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, that was Richard Petty's last race. Yep. Jeff and, Gordon's and Jeff first Gordon's race. First race. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, so yeah, there was a lot of things. That one was yeah. will always be in my memory because I remember it. I wasn't ten years old. I remember <laughs> it. It's just not a um, real vivid memory. Either ESPN <laughs> or Speed did a whole one hour show. Yeah, I about saw that the, race. It was the day. called that the was, day. Uh, yeah, it was a couple months ago. They, they knew quite a few of them. Yeah, yeah. And, that was a really good show. Um, Why don't I ever get to see these? I, I think hey, the race. DVR, I, I think go the back Holmes- there and work on my computer. Will you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that the Homestead race was more exciting to, to watch than any other Homestead race I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it's top yes. ten of this year. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. easily. You, you know. Yeah. Um, well, usually by the I time think it'll be remembered Homestead, more for that. Usually by the time you get to Homestead. Uh, the only well, it's all in, in the out. top ten, the only positions that haven't been finalized are like six back. Mm-hmm. This year it was flipped. Yeah. It's yeah. the top positions that had the chance for movers and shakers, and I mean that's what we want to see. I noticed that that uh, Mike Ford said today, admitted today, something we've all felt for a year, that when Hamlin and Ford lost last year's championship, yeah. they never recovered. No, no, they. Never he did. said no. we never got over that. Yeah. And he said part of why we failed this year was that we still had the hangover depression yeah. or whatever right. from last year. Yeah. And I contend, and I told somebody this not the other day, when that homestead race started a year ago, in every pit box there is a scoring monitor. Mm-hmm. Hamlin had one, Harvick had one, and Johnson had one. And it started out and it showed the points as the race began. And on the first lap, Hamlin was still leading because he qualified pretty well. On the second or third lap, by the time Jimmy Johnson had gone by both of them, Hamlin was suddenly down. Well, no, Hamlin started way back in the field. So Hamlin immediately went from the leader to like, you know, ninth in points. And I I told somebody the other day, I believe that as soon as they saw that, and as soon as they saw Jimmy Johnson go from second points to first, and their driver go from first to ninth, they said, boys, we're done. Yeah. And that little deal with Biffle, the little incident he had with Greg Biffle over in the backstretch, that did not look to me like it was that bad a deal, but obviously it was. Mm-hmm. But that team never, they never recovered from seeing their number going from first to ninth in just points. Just took all the wind out of your Absolutely. Yeah. Now, they ultimately finished second by 37 or whatever it was, but they had to be thinking to themselves, my God, we had him right where we wanted him. Yep. We had him last weekend at Phoenix right where we wanted him. And we had to pit and he didn't. Otherwise, we'd win this thing by running 30th. Yeah. Now, they never got over it. They never got over it. And that's what Mike Ford said today. We never, we never got over last year. Do you think – I, I, I was very proud, and it, I, you know I don't know Carl or, or Tony or any of them, but I was very proud of the way both of them handled this whole chase yeah, deal. Yeah. I, I think oh, yeah. that was probably the best competitive sportsmanship I've ever seen. Do you think Carl is going to be that strong? Well, next my, year? The, the problem, the, the way I see it, and I don't. Well, again, what do I know? I've never driven a car. Um, Carl and Bob Osborne have got to overcome what Denny and Mike Ford didn't overcome. Yeah. My God, we tied in points. We yeah. ran, we ran ten chase races, and we started with a three-point lead over over Stewart. Yeah. We ended up dead tied, and he wins a tiebreaker. They've got they've got to get the monkey. They've got to get a whole new mindset for next year. That they've got to say, boys, we did all we could do. Did, did you see the award ceremony? Nah. The, yeah, the I award show? I was watching that, and uh, Carl had a pretty good speech. He was up there talking about, you know, obviously they're disappointed, but yeah. everything he, he said. But, you know, he said before the race started, if he lost, he would be the best, best loser the best car has ever seen. Right. Well, he said when the checkered flag flew and they lost, and he was really wondering if he could hold up to that. So he got back to his pit stall, and the first person at his window net was his wife. Mm-hmm. He climbed out of the car, and he's he's looking all sad at his wife, and he's like, we, we couldn't do it. 
She goes, you cut that out. You didn't lose that title. You tied. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, you can't argue if you, that. If you, yeah. if you, if you look at breakers, it. So, I mean. If you, if you look at the points. If you look at the points. Tony, I mean, Carl had a far better per race finish average yes. than Tony in the chase. But look at the bonus points. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tony, mm -hmm. Tony earned races. way more bonus points than Carl because he won five races. Yeah. He led, I think, three of the other five. And, and Carl led probably a lap or two in each one. But those five wins for three points each, yeah. that was yeah. it. To me, it looked like Tony was going, Carl was like, okay, we're going to maintain this whole thing, you know, yeah, we, we've got to get top tens. We got to. Tony said, to "Piss on it, we're going to win every race." And yeah, I, yeah. that, that yeah. was his attitude. Well, Tony had nothing. Uh, he had nothing, nothing, and he had nothing to lose. Yeah, why not? Well, Tony went into the chase, I believe, ninth. Well, yeah, yeah, we, something we like that. It, we had, said it last mm -hmm. week. Tony came into the chase, his his own biggest critic. Yeah. After the first, after the first race in the chase that he won it, suddenly they have a real shot, and he said, "Well." If we can make up these many points by winning races, let's just go win yeah, all. Yeah, he said it, yeah, and I believe he said that. it at Richmond. We don't deserve to be in this. No, chase, he said man. it. He said it at Michigan. Michigan, yeah, Michigan. back in August. He said, yeah. "Man, as bad as we're running, we we're taking yeah. a spot taking that somebody else should have." Yeah. yeah. And then he went to Bristol and didn't he did okay at Bristol, as I recall, but then he went to Atlanta and ran great, ran good at Richmond, and then won Chicago and won Martinsville. Boom. Got yeah, he won the, Loudon. Yeah. He won the first two chase races. Yes. And then he won the, he first, won the first two and the last two in Martinsville in the middle. In Martinsville in the middle, yeah. yeah. Yep. Martinsville was very impressive because he was about ready to go a lap down up there at one point and then just came back. They tweaked on the car and, yeah. you know. Yeah, was, Do you remember who he passed with two laps to go to, to, to win that race? Jimmy Johnson. On the outside. On yeah. the outside. On yep. the outside. There's three points right there. There was yeah. a... Uh, well, five, however you figure those uh, silly points. Now. And speaking of that, saw an interview with Jimmy after the race. He was like, I've, I've never seen that happen. I don't know how he was able to right, stick it right. on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. It, it reminds I, mean, me I don't know what they're doing with those cars. Doing the pass on the outside. Or Mark Works for when he would get his car set up just right. Zip around on the outside. Yeah. Did, did, but, but you think about it. You think about those guys raced. And, again, I'm forgetting the first 26. They were in the last 10 races. And if Carl Edwards had finished one position better in yeah. any of those oh, 10, yeah. any of them, he'd have won it. It, yeah. it would have been all, all over. All other, all other things being equal. Except yeah. for the ones they won. Yeah. I mean, he would have, if, if, uh, if Tony Stewart had not passed Jeff Burton on the last lap at Phoenix, there's a position he picked up. Yeah. Well, did Burton let him go? What did Burton have to, to gain finishing fourth or fifth? Big deal. Yep. That's a Chevrolet team, a Chevrolet. You know, who knows? Mm -hmm. yep. Who knows? Yep. So I mean, just yeah, I, but I keep later. thinking, I keep thinking, if Carl had led one more lap at one race or stayed out under caution to lead a lap under whatever, I mean, there you can you can second guess yourself forever. Oh yeah. Yep. And that's what that's what Mike Ford said today. That's what Bob Osborne and Carl are going to have to not do. Mm -hmm. They can't spend the winter. Worrying about what happened this past fall, and if they do, if they do, they're gonna be as bad next year as we were this year. Just like exactly. his wife said, "Hey, you tied for first. Yeah, you tied. Yeah. You didn't lose. You tied." Um, but where's the trophy, though? Yeah, that's that, well, that's a good. point. Who sat at the head that's table? Point. That that is a good point. But uh, as strong as they ran, I I just can't believe that they would hang their heads about this season and. And do anything other than run strong next season. Oh, I mean, yeah. Obviously, we'll right, find right. out in Daytona, but uh, I know if I was involved in the team, there's no way I would feel even remotely bad about the season. You can't. You'd be disappointed. You'd be disappointed, but, but yeah. you, you know, you can't just sit back in the shop yeah. going, "Well, how could we have improved one position at right. this track?" Here's a good one. Here's a good one for you. And we we were talking about Tony. Get Brian on. I know that. How impressive is it the way he handled himself with the media, with the pressure and all that, okay, compared to what way, he was, he was having way too 10, much fun. 10, 15 years ago? Well, but, I mean, when you're when you're about to win a championship, yeah. you can afford to be nice to people. <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
I, mean, I, I told somebody in here earlier, I said, Tony Stewart can be the most gracious, the most charming, the most, the, the funniest, most accommodating guy in the world. I have seen him at Daytona do, doing Make-A-Wish and, and these children's charity deals. You would think he's just the greatest guy in the world. But then an hour later when he's having a hard time in practice or something goes wrong, he gets out of the car and throws stuff around, boy, you're scared to get anywhere near him. I've never seen anybody with that range of anger and civility. Uh, Jeff Gordon is always pretty pretty level. Jimmy Johnson is always pretty level. Kyle and Kurt are always to the, the same side of being nasty. There's very little good about them. But Tony has got a greater range of emotion of anybody I've ever seen out there. Is it just Richard Petty never you could not tell Richard Petty could have had the worst day of his life or could have just won the five hundred. He's the same guy. Signing autographs as hard as he can. But Tony's not that way. Tony doesn't but the thing about he's not a hypocrite. You don't have to worry about well, what's Tony gonna do now? You know what Tony's gonna do now. <laughs> yeah. Back on he doesn't hide himself. No. Nope. <laughs> this is getting interesting. We but got Brian, but he's pretty good. Yeah, Brian, how you doing tonight? Brian Morehouse on the phone here with us. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good. I feel good now that I've had a couple of weeks off. Yeah, it sounds like you had a good time. I'm almost ready to go back to racing. Got to wait what another two months? Seventy some days. <laughs> hey, that's going. Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, it's, you know, been a good vacation. Nice to always. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something that was really hard. I didn't work the last race, and I went on a cruise. And that was really hard. I, my my promise was I was not gonna get on the internet. I was not gonna do none of that. I did not find out who won the championship until Wednesday morning when we got off of the boat at 5 after 7. I was waking people up out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on these cruises, they'll tell you the football scores. They'll tell you hockey scores. They'll tell you everything, but they won't tell you who won the daggone championship. So, but I, I stuck to my promise. I wasn't going to be on the Internet and all that while we were on the boat. So I had a good time uh, and enjoyed it. So ready to go. First and ready to hit uh, this upcoming season for 2012. Are you going to the touring division banquet? Yeah, I'll be uh, it's championship week here in Charlotte right now. Uh, we got the All-American Series Friday night, and then uh, we have the touring series on Saturday uh, banquet. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah, so it's, it's really good to get to see everybody, get to see everybody out of the racing uniforms and you know, these guys, you don't used to, you're not used to seeing them in suits and ties and everything. So uh, it's always different. And uh, it, it's a good time. I mean, uh, you know, I've been through the last three, four years, and uh, it's always NASCAR puts on one heck of a banquet. Uh, they, they go to the extremes, and it's, it's really a great time. <laughs> they, they do know how to put on a show, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um. So what's new for you this year? What are, are we still doing the exact same thing? Are we going to stick with the touring divisions? Uh, yeah, um, I'll find out more in January. Uh, there's still, you know, a lot of things going on. Uh, I'm trying to find out what the schedule's going to be for the touring. I probably won't do k and as much. Uh, I'm trying to cut back on my schedule. got a few new things in my life. So uh, trying to, uh, you know, slow down a little bit. I'm not getting any younger. Just had a birthday, so... Uh, AARP just sent me information, so I guess I got to reply back to him. I'm starting to get a discount on things. Don't you hate it when he that happens? He doesn't sound like you're 70. You know I'm a kid, right? I'm a kid. <laughs> but, uh, no, I am going to slow down hopefully a little bit. Uh, the schedule will be coming out here real soon, and, you know, I'll still be doing fill-in for Cup and all that, you know, when needed. So, it, you know, I got to see some great tracks this year and year before last, so hopefully I'll still have the opportunity to be able to do that. Well, you're getting at that age, you know, where you can retire from work and, and go do this full time, you know. I'm a, I'm a forward in the hey, hey, evidently you're not my account. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. A whole, you're telling me a whole different story. You need to make a bit more money before you can retire. If he's got an account, he's got too much money. Yes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wouldn't my account telling me that, brother. 
you know, hopefully I got a couple more years in me. And I mean, I want to do this until I'm in my 60s. Uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of people are always asking me, they're like, how do you work, you know, two jobs and everything else? It's like, really, the racing is not a job. It's, it's a getaway. You go away, you have a good time, and you get paid to do it and, you know, be able to talk to everybody and see everybody. I mean, you know, we, when I go to Martinsville, Richmond, Charlotte, places like that, it's, it's like getting to see everybody and watch a race right down on ground level. I, I don't know. I, I think I might have asked you this last time. I'm going to ask you this because I've seen you at Martinsville. Mm-hmm. How many times do you get pinged by them? <laughs> lug nuts. nuts. You talking about the lug nuts? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I got two, I think, in Martinsville. I, I had a bruise. Uh, off of Trevor Bain. They, you got to think, man, those guys are uh, making, you know, quick pit stops, and they don't know where them lug nuts are going. And next thing you know, they could be six pit stalls down. When they take off and they hit that lug nut, spin, spin that wheel, it's like being shot from a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I can ima- that's what I think it would be. I'm not, not to say I've ever been shot by a pistol or a shotgun, but that's just, hopefully that's the closest I'm ever going to come to being shot like that. So it uh, it hurts. You just got to, you know, I got a lot of uh, investment in my teeth. So, you know, I try to make sure that I cover my teeth and eyes. Everything else you can break. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wear a helmet? Well, certain things. You know what I'm getting. Yeah, I, well, we know where you're going on now, Hoss. <laughs> so, but uh, no, uh, I did get pinged a couple of times. I forgot all about that. Uh, my worst one was Charlotte. Uh, one hit me, and I thought somebody had thrown something at me. It was my first time, and this was a couple of years ago. I just wasn't expecting it. You know, when you do the the local series, you're not used to things being slung at you unless it's you know one of the guys coming after you with a sledgehammer, but. You know, other than that, I was like, what the heck just happened to me? Because it hit me in my back, let's put it that way. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And finally figure it out, you know, you got to watch what's in front of you and behind you. Yeah, exactly. I got you here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this, and I'm going to ask Al the exact same thing. So you, you went to a lot of races this year, touring division, you went all over. What's your most memorable moment this year? Uh, man. That you got to see. Well, I mean, you know, on the Torrent Series, uh, I work uh, Victory Lane. So, you know, as soon as the winner comes in, I get to go to Victory Lane and make sure that they're not doing anything with the car. Uh, and every, nobody's jumping all over the car and everything. That's that's pretty cool to me to be able to see the, the winner be able to celebrate with his family and friends and everything else. Uh I think one of the other things would have been pitting for one of the chase guys, uh, not pitting for them, but, you know, being their pit official with, uh, Ryan Newman, uh, having Trevor Bain, uh, let me think, uh, Elliot Sadler and the Nationwide, uh, you know, things that you never really dreamed of that you would be doing when I was on a local level that now I'm just so darn fortunate to be doing, you know, within Cup and, you know, in the touring series. Uh, the, the, there's just so many. I mean, you know, beginning to meet, uh, you know, people like Richard Petty, uh, you know, and to be able to sit down and talk one on one and, you know, not be a fan and just, you know, sit there and just be, you know, talking about racing. And matter of fact, when I did talk to him this year, it was, you know, we were talking about the weather and, you know, how it's, it's always changing. One, one minute it's hot, next minute it's cold. You don't know what to pack. So uh, it was really cool to be able to sit down and, uh, you know, chat with him and people like Trevor Bain and people that are up and coming. And I'd say that's probably my most memorable. Uh, you know, when it comes to racing, all of it to me is, is just a dream come true. I mean, it's something that, you know, y'all, y'all guys know. I mean, I always wanted to do. I just didn't, you know, know how to go about doing it and then got the opportunity to be able to do it and jumped on it. <laughs> Al, I'm, I'm going to ask Al real quick. Your most memorable? Oh, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, mean other, you mean other than watching some driver's wives go off on the pit box? Yeah, other than that. <laughs> other than that. <laughs> um, the Talladega finish when it came four wide, probably. I mean, just nobody – no, it came basically eight wide. Well, four wide in two rows. Eight, 
that was a, that was pretty memorable. You know, Bain went in Daytona was classic. Yeah. yeah. The Wood Brothers hadn't won anything in 20 years, maybe 25, uh, maybe 20. So that was that was a pretty big deal. That's, that's it. Um, from a racing perspective, that's probably that's probably it. Bain, Bain at Daytona and the eight cars together at, uh, at Talladega. Talladega. Yeah. I, I'm gonna have, I, we're gonna finish up with Brian, and I, I'm gonna have you tell the story of your first interview. Oh man! Oh, I, 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 was got it. It. I was just getting ready to say he was, Brian was talking about, about Richard Petty, Petty. And, and I'm gonna have it. Have you ever heard this, Brian? I haven't heard this one. You know who we got, don't you? We got Al Pierce here with us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me, oh, we're gonna have Al. How you doing, Al? <laughs> I was okay. I brought this <laughs> Richard Petty story up. It, it's a great story. Well, depends on whether you hear it or telling it. <laughs> depends on how you look at it. Oh, you ready? Yeah, go All ahead. Right. Brian, you got to listen to this. This is good. Go ahead. All right, the Daily Press hired me, or well, Times Herald, which was now Daily Press. I got hired by the newspaper in middle of June of 69. And the first Dover race was a 300-mile Dover race on a Sunday in July. July 7th or 8th, something like that. I went up for the race, first race I'd ever covered. I had seen a race before, but had never covered one. So Tom Cheryl sent me up there, go to Dover, watch the race in the press box and all this stuff. And back then, the start finish line was on the what is now the backstretch side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything was reversed. Yeah. So the media center was just looking right down on the start finish line, victory lane, the whole deal. So. It races 300 miles. It's over pretty quickly. Petty wins. Sonny Hutchins finishes second in a Zervakis car. Um, Pearson blew a tire and wrecked and finished bad. Leroy Yarborough blew a tire and wrecked. So Petty wins easily in a Ford. Crawls out of the car, waves at the crowd. They do all the little PR stuff. They bring him up to the media center, and everybody's asking questions about the track. Do you like it? Is 300 miles too short? Well, you know, whatever. I'm in the back of the room because I'm a cub reporter. I didn't know what I was doing. And so finally I kind of eased my hand up a little bit. The question, yeah, you, you, sir, back in the corner. I said, Mr. Petty, why did you climb out the window and not just open the door at the end? <laughs> well, I didn't know any better. You know, that's how much I knew. And Richard Petty looked at me under, under that sunglasses and hat and he said, Boy, you don't know much, do you? <laughs> and I said, no, sir, but I expect to learn. <laughs> and if Richie Petty walked in that door right now, he would tell you, Pierce, you ain't learned nothing yet. <laughs> and that was 1969. Yeah. We're talking 43 years, coming up on 44 years. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, my first, my first official question was, why did you climb out the window and not just open the door? Because, <laughs> see, I had lied to get the job. I knew the Daily Press had lost their racing writer. A guy had gone to Durham. He's still there, in fact, Frank DeCenzo. So I knew Frank had left, and I knew they needed somebody who knew a little bit about racing. And so when I went in for my interview, I said, oh, man, I'm from North Carolina. I've seen Richard Petty race, which is true. I'd seen him at Daytona from the infield. But I didn't know anything. I just lied to him. Oh, I know everything. So they hired me. <laughs> and the first race I went to, I asked a guy, Why'd you climb out the window and I open the door? So <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now, did, you, did, did you come back and publish that? Oh, that's been written a thousand times. Oh. Has it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Either I wrote it or somebody wrote it about me. But, but uh, yeah, it's been, that's been. I'm sure that was a pretty good story with everybody else that was there. Well, they, a lot of them didn't know any better either. A lot of them, were, I mean, you got to remember, this is Dover. This is not stock car country back in 69. Right. right. Yeah. You know, there were a few guys there who had been to other races, but it wasn't like today when you've got this great national oh, yeah. crowd of media following these guys. Yeah. We've got thousands of outlets covering oh. the same thing, yeah. Bloggers and internets and yeah. people with cell phones oh, who yeah. think they're reporters. and <laughs> But that was I, I didn't know any better. I just wondered why I climbed out the window. <laughs> I didn't just open the door. <laughs> 
And yeah. I bet I bet Richard Petty would know that. He he probably remembers. If that. you walked up to him at Daytona in February and say, "What's the what's the, what's the first question Al Pierce ever asked you?" He he he'd said, "Dover, <laughs> when did Dover deal?" That that boy don't know nothing. Didn't know it then. Don't know nothing now. <laughs> but he's a good old boy. We like him. He's been around a long time. Do you still frequently see him? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. He used to do the motorcycle ride when he and Kyle were getting along better. Than they are now. Richard did the, the, the charity ride every year. Every year. Yeah. Um, Richard's wife, Kyle's mother, is not doing well. She's been ill now for about a year, I guess. And, uh, you know, we didn't see Richard a whole lot this year. But when we did, he was just the same old Richard. The, the sunglasses, the cowboy hat, skinny as a rail, just, you know, same old Richard. Autograph, signing everything anybody brings to him. Yeah. yeah. Good old boy. I have seen him. Uh, he, he never turns down an autograph. Right. Uh, I'm telling you, he'll be walking on down, and you know, I saw three girls just start yelling and everything, and he was in a hurry to get over to the media center, and he turned around and made sure that he took his picture with them and signed autographs for every one of them. I thought that was that was really special. But like you said, he still looks the same as he did years ago. Yeah. Still getting it. R- racing's the only sport I really, really know very well. But I can't imagine, I, I just cannot imagine any other athlete at any level of any sport, whether it's Arnold Palmer or Jack Nicholas or John McEnroe or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Jim Brown or anybody, I can't imagine anybody in any sport being anywhere near as fan-friendly and accommodating as Richard Petty's been since day one. Yeah. Richard Petty told me one day, he said, the first autograph I gave somebody, I said, I, I thank that young man all afternoon. I couldn't believe one of my autograph. And he said, I've always treated it like, and, and he said, my rule of thumb is, this cat may be getting the thousandth autograph I've ever given him, or may be the first. Mm-hmm. And he said, I, want, I, wanna, I always go on the assumption, this is the first for this guy, and I'm going to make it special. And I can't imagine Jim Brown or, or Peyton Manning or A-Rod or Willie, anybody doing that to fans. I just can't. Uh, I, I still have one of his autographs back from 63. He called up my father. My father used to race with him and Lee. Mm-hmm. And he called him up on a weekend, and he went to uh, one of the Chrysler dealerships, uh, Merrimack Motors. Yeah. And uh, he called him up, and he, my dad said, hey, you want to go meet Richard Petty? I thought he was, you know, giving him a line of poop. Went down there, and those two started hugging on each other like they were long-lost brothers, you know. And all of a sudden, my eyes, I was only freaking eight years old. You know, took a picture of me and my two sisters and him, and still running around open-wheel trailer. And still got that big old, yeah. big-ass signature, same way as he does today. He, he, was, he, he is the best there's ever been. I, you can't all around, yeah. Yeah, and, and he still loves racing. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 Pe- pe- people claim that Muhammad Ali may have given more autographs than anybody in the world. I, I, so. He hadn't. He hadn't done a whole lot for the last ten or twelve years. Yeah. And Richard was doing it a long time before Ali came along, and Richard's still doing it. Yeah. Um, and just as aggressively. Oh, yeah. 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 But it's amazing how the mainstream media, of which I was a member for years, still doesn't look at, at NASCAR or racing as as what it is. No. I mean, when Dan Weldon got killed, they all said, why are they doing that? Why are they racing that fast? They shouldn't be out there. And I'm saying, well, where were you 10 years ago yeah. when Greg Moore got killed? Where were you when so-and-so, you know, did this or that? Well, we, we didn't notice it then. Well, then... Get out of here now. Leave us alone. Yeah. You know. Nowadays, everything is so instantaneous when it comes to media. Oh, I know. I know. You know. Yeah. So that's the other, that's the other thing I was talking about. Kyle, uh, Kurt Busch was saying the other day that that maybe Penske organization was too formal for him, too buttoned up, too, too structured, too strict a little bit. You can't really be yourself. I'm thinking, wait a minute, you drove for the man six years. All of a sudden, now that you've left him, you're saying, well, maybe I shouldn't have been there all this time. Why didn't you quit after the second year or the first year? 
certainly you didn't wake up last Sunday morning thinking, you know, I think I'll just quit. Well, wasn't, it, know? wasn't it the end of last year he, he, he had just re-signed with Penske? Wasn't it last year? Uh, my, or the year before, Or maybe. the year before? Yeah. yeah it I wasn't it was too year, long ago yeah. that he re-signed. it was the year before for a two-year deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that also reminds me of the time when, when NASCAR changed their point structure for this year. Yeah. They, they said, you know, we figured out. It's, I love it when they say, you know, we finally figured out that the point system's not really good. That fans don't understand it. <laughs> drivers don't understand it. The yeah. media doesn't understand it. And I'm thinking, it's been the same system for 35 years. Yeah. Yeah. It took you this long yeah. to figure out that it's not good? We'll see. The original napkin finally fell apart. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the Joe Whitlock <laughs> and Phil Homer and Bob Lafford napkin fell apart at the yeah. Boot Hill Saloon. Right. But I'm thinking, why do, why do people always say, you know, we've known for a long time this wasn't working. Well, why did it take 35 yeah. years right. to decide to change it? <laughs> you know, and I just... I, Oh. Yeah. Kurt, if you didn't like Roger Penske after the first year, you should have quit. Get the hell out of there. Exactly. Don't, if you don't like it, don't do it. Bobby Allison, he moved around a lot with the different car owners and different teammates yeah. and all that, yeah. trying to find the right, yeah. right thing. Yeah. Um, Bobby wasn't the easiest guy in the world to work with either. Well, Bobby, the thing is, though, Bobby knew more about the race car than maybe any crew chief he ever had. Yeah. Yep. I mean, he knew what he wanted in a car better than that guy did and if Bobby said I want an, I want this spring or this shock or I want this much air pressure and the crew chief said I don't think so Bobby I'm driving this car do it like I want it and Bobby was usually right I, I've heard and, and I can't remember who said it they said Bobby Allison whether he was on a road course when they were doing the road courses at Riverside mm -hmm. or at like Daytona or something he was the easiest man on a transmission there there was ever mm -hmm. known. To, he yeah, never probably. had a transmission problem ever, for what it's worth. <laughs> so, Kurt Busch can tear out a transmission in two laps. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I didn't. I, at Homestead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at Homestead. <laughs> you just, you, you've just shifted like once. Yeah. You've gone the restart. Yeah, you, you left pit road. You yeah. shifted one time. Right. And you didn't touch it for three laps. Right, you take the you green. The bottom right, there you go. What the hell? I don't know. <laughs> you know. Now, nobody's saying that he didn't do it intentionally. We're not claiming he did it on purpose. But if, no. you, if you want to get out of a deal, that might be the way to do it. Yeah, if you just don't want to finish running the race, right. uh, it, it there's works. ways to do it, yeah. You wonder, you, listen, you wonder whether when Jerry Punch got to him, if ESPN had been ready right then. And Kurt hadn't had to stand around yeah. for 30 seconds or a minute or whatever. Uh -huh. And Jerry had inter inter interviewed him civilly right there. Would he still have a right? Or was that or was that ESPN 90-second window what did him in? That's a good question. No, no. I, don't, I don't really have an answer for that. That is a good question. They, they claim I, well, that bo both, both Kurt... And Penske claimed that that well, was not the the tilt factor event. Well, but well, see, that wasn't the only event in that series either. I mean, he was he was yelling at his crew on the radio immediately after the transmission blew up. He was flipping people off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The garage yeah. on the way in, yeah. which they showed that on live TV. But he could have gotten away did, with that. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it was. I mean, Jerry Punch, bless his heart, Doctor Jerry Punch, bless his heart is the most civil, polite, professional guy out there. And when you when you wee wee on his shoes, well <laughs> you've you've oh, yeah. really you've gone, you know You know, i now I'm gonna have to go look it up on YouTube. Yeah, I've seen missed that? The, I missed the beginning part of the race. Oh I've seen I've seen it. Oh, you, I, I didn't see what they no, wait, showed. You're talking about the Kurt Bush deal or him yeah, blowing Kurt up Bush. the, the Whatever. Uh, transmission. Well the you see that what we're talking about is a YouTube video, somebody's cell phone camera yeah. video or something in the uh, in, the in, garage in the garage. Area. Because you see, when they went to go interview him, and Dr. Jerry Punch was already there, uh, and they were expecting to go right there. Well, of course, the bigger story was the fact that Tony had grill damage, and they were mm -hmm. wondering about his radiator. Mm -hmm. So, of course, ESPN is going to say, "Well, he's not as important. We got to focus on the championship contender yeah. for right now. And Kurt stood and Kurt, there. And, and Kurt stood there just stewing and getting mm -hmm. more and more pissed. And well, didn't the Jamie Little deal happen 
at Homestead too? I don't, I don't, I don't remember that. I don't know that she was involved in this deal. This is strictly Jerry Punch and a, and a yeah. and an ESPN guy. Yeah. And Jerry finally said, "Okay, guys, that's it. Let's go. Yeah. Leave him alone." Yeah. And I, just, but I still, I wonder whether you, you got to wonder whether, you know, flipping off to people in the garage. That's one thing. Yelling on the radio is kind of part of what he does. <laughs> but the, the the one of those stick with what you're good at, right? Is. The language he used and the fact that it was Jerry Punch, you got to wonder whether yeah. Shell Penzel said, you know what, that's you don't. Hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. It, it might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. It, yeah. Maybe it, it wasn't. To, it and maybe be, the, maybe the balance was already in place. It used to be any type of exposure, yeah. good or negative, was always considered good when it came to racing. Yeah. Now with money constraints oh, and yeah. sponsors wanting to look good to right. the fans, yeah. now comes the turn about where, okay, you're going to be bad publicity for us? We got to find well, somebody else. And you know, back in the uh, back in the Dale Earnhardt days, Goodrich uh, Service Center. I think I'd be on that. I mean, okay, you're a bad guy on the track. Who cares? You're you're talking about a service shop. But like Kyle Busch, every time he acts like a jerk off, he's selling candy to kids, yeah. or actually he's selling candy to mothers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you got to go for your target audience here. Do, and and I, I've got Al watching it here. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Brian, we haven't forgot about you. This is what happened. I didn't. I didn't see what happened there. But it was. It was the language he used with Jerry Punch. Well, was that on TV live? No, that, that didn't make TV, but oh, okay. that's a TV, cam that's that's a TV yeah. camera, but that's a cut reel. <laughs> that's a loud one. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> got the whole field being yeah. <laughs> informed about it. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, I think. I think it was the uh, the cumulative effect. But yeah. but I think he. I think he would have survived without the without the language that made it on air. Yeah. Or at least made it on on. Yeah, I will. These things. I, I'm sitting here going, and it's kind of funny. You still there, Brian? Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm. 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 I got a question for you, but hold on. But I'm sitting here. Kyle Bush is in this one. Kurt Bush is in this one. Kyle Bush slaps Waltrip. Kurt Bush tangles with reporter. I mean, it just seems like. There, there, there's a lot of Kurt Bush, and well, here we go. Actually. Brad Keselowski, or Brad and Carl Edwards, there's... Well, you know, uh, I mean, we've all had situations where we've gotten ourselves, you know, sort of hot at a track. I mean, you've been a driver. Uh, Roger, you've been a driver. You know how it is. Um, you know, it's like I used to say at Langley Speedway, uh, don't really mess with the guys too much in August. Let them get out of the car and cool down. Then we'll go ahead and, you know, do what we need to tell them or whatever. Uh, the, the hotter it got, it seems like the more tempers flew. Um, in a situation like this, you know, I, I didn't really get to, I wasn't there, so I don't know nothing that went on except for what I've seen with the media. Um, but, it, you know, it's it, it's a sad situation. I mean, the, the kid's got a lot of talent. I know away from the track, uh, he, he's a great, he's a great guy, uh, you know, and I, I've seen him do charity things and everything else. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, happen. Well, they say Ted Bundy was a pretty nice guy, too, until he was, you know, between killings. <laughs> Who was that? Ted, Ted Bundy. Bundy. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the Penn State football coach was a nice guy between showers, you know. Oh, well, you know, I guess they were, Al, but, uh, you know, it's a situation I think all of us have been in 
four. I imagine you have too. Uh, you know, it's just it's sad. I mean, you know, we can sit here and put down the whole situation, and that's what you know sports writing and media is all about. Um, you know, it, it's it's writing and, and telling the people what they want. You know, it's happened. It's done. It's over with. You know, hopefully he'll find a ride, and hopefully he'll learn from this. You know, we all go out and make mistakes. Um, I think we all do. I know I have. Uh, I remember the first time, uh, guys, I stepped on an air hose. Oh, you'd have thought it was the it was the worst thing I ever could have done. I was so nervous, everything else, and you'd have thought that I cost them guys the race. I, I didn't mean to do it. Um, you know, I'm trying to protect them and try to make sure that, you know, they get their pit stop done safely and everything else. And the next thing I know, I have somebody coming down off the pit box saying, do you see what you've done? You know, and I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I was trying to do the right thing. I mean, I learned and lived from it. Um, it made myself a better person from it. And, you know, it happened to me, you know, when I, my first year. I'm glad that it did. I've made mistakes since then. But, uh, you know, you learn and you live from your mistakes. And hopefully these two guys will. If they don't, well, you've seen the course of action that can be taken. And I think a lot of drivers will end up looking at that and, you know, thinking about it before they proceed on and, you know, either talk to the media or show any type of action. Yeah, I mean, if, it was, if it was his first time, yeah, yeah, you'd give him a break. That's, that's, yeah. that's kind yeah. of what I'm thinking. If it was the first season or the first two or three Incidents. What you're community. saying in that category. This is and, four or five years it, down the road. It's sad. It's really sad that yeah. it happened, but it's happened. You know, we're going to, racing's going to happen in, at Daytona in February. Things are going to, people are going to be with new teams. People got new crew chiefs and things are going to move on. Maybe he'll get a ride and uh, maybe he won't. You know, who knows? I haven't heard anything and, you know, I, I guess y'all probably have heard more than I have. On you know the whole situation. Not really. It's only been two days. <laughs> you know, yeah, we were just saying that. You know, yeah. it's been two days. Yeah, yeah El, El brought that up too. You know, it's only been two days. Right. You know, we, we we can we can it was watch this one develop. It, it was leaked on Sunday. It was officially announced Monday. 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 Yeah. So I mean, th- this is still real early into this whole episode. Yeah. This is the start of silly season, which I love. You know, you get past <laughs> the anybody will take the chance banquet, with him? Everything changes. Do what? Do y'all think anybody will take a chance with him? I mean, you know, he's already been with Roush and then Penske. I mean, do you think that, uh, you know, there's another team owner out there that, that will take the opportunity and try to sign him? Um, well, he's, Al- he's, got a, he's got a champion provisional. Yeah. Al yeah. pointed that out earlier. He's got a championship provisional. That's a automatic that's, good thing for anybody that's in the outside the 35-point that's, area. That's, pretty good. that's a pretty good yeah. care to bring along. Maybe they can get Tap Out or some UFC brand to sponsor him then. <laughs> Then it'll all be good. <laughs> then it'll all, yeah, he'll fit right in. That's yeah. right. <laughs> well, and you, WWE, and you know, you brought up a good point, but Childress doesn't need the championships. So they've got everybody in the top thirty-five. Yeah. Hendricks has got everybody in the top thirty-five. Yeah. You know, well, you've only got four, it, two champions to worry about: Stewart right. and Jimmy Johnson. Stewart, active. Well, no. I mean, I mean, since Bush, only two guys have won championships. Jimmy Johnson and Tony and Stewart. Tony, yeah. yeah, and they're both top thirty-five, of course. Right. So there's no, I mean, Kurt's got the, Kurt's got the provisional as much as he needs it. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody will give him a deal. Somebody, will, somebody, he, he'll let me tell you what, he'll get more offers than not. Yeah. He'll turn people down. He can pick and choose. Yeah. It won't be great. Well, doesn't but Jeff Gordon still got a champions? He's top he, 35, though. Yeah, yeah. 30. well, then, that's need, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah he need, really doesn't have anybody. The, the last one to use a champion's provisional I'm aware of was, um, was it Bobby Labonte? Terry Labonte. Ter- Terry Labonte. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I think it was Terry. Cause then well, no, they, Bobby, Bobby was after Terry. Bobby's got or a if, if they too, right? If they had needed one, Bobby would have taken it over Terry. Right, yeah, but yeah. but Terry, I think Terry did use one a couple of years yeah. ago. Did, yeah, didn't he try to run the first five for some? That's team a, that's team? another yeah. deal, man. Just it's, it gets confusing. You're Terry Labonte, why don't you just stay parts. home? <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself, really. That's just awful. So. Yeah. Well, I, now, now wait a second. Okay, I'm going to bring this up. Kenny Schrader's been out there a couple of times this year, but he hasn't done that bad. Well, but he he, you know. he hasn't done that great either. Well, that's true. But, but the was, only reason they gave Terry a ride was he brought the provisional with him. Right. So, 
Yeah. And he was, a little bit of different. Starting before. park, wasn't he? Yeah. He didn't even run a full race. I hate yeah. starting park. I hate that too. Yeah. yeah I, I think they should have. In, unless you're involved in an accident, I think you should run, say, thirty-five percent of the race. How can minimum. you? How can you do? How can you make them? The guy can say it's vibrating, it's overheating, well, well, the transmission's start, loose, you know, whatever. Well, the, the tires. Start, yeah, but see, the, the starting part deal, the, their whole, most of the guys that are doing that that don't have the full sponsorship to run a full race or don't have enough cars to run a full season, what they're trying to do is get in the race for the least amount of money possible so that they make a profit on it. Yeah, oh yeah. So they yeah. can turn around and get, get a sponsor. Shop open, number one. Yeah, to, exactly. To get their, yeah. If, I think if you... If you were to say you go out there, you run 20 laps, and you pull the car in because you didn't have enough tires to keep going, and NASCAR looks at your car and there's nothing wrong with it, I think you're in the red. I think that's how you force them to to quit playing that game. Yeah, but show the, up to the a race driver and show up. The driver can always say, you know, I just couldn't. It wasn't handling. I just couldn't make it go. And I don't feel I mean, safe in the car. And it's overheating. Right. I don't Same care back. what the gauge says, or they can fix the gauge. They can, yeah. they can make it overheat. Yeah. So, it's it's hard to do. I I like what Mark Martin did, and I know we're we're running over here, which is normal. <laughs> and and he did it when he was with Roush. The car was just not handling. They were going to park it, and Mark Martin and I I can't remember who it was stepped up and said, "Let's use this as a chance." To, to play with chassis setups. And they were running back and forth from the garage, changing <laughs> shocks and springs. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I I know of one team that was doing that this year whenever they made the race. They were using it getting ready for next year. Yeah. They were a starting park. They were only going to go on one or two sets of tires. But they were using that opportunity. So is starting park necessarily that bad of a deal? If you're doing something like that, you're at, you're putting in the R and D. I don't see a problem with it. It's the people who, you know, ten laps into the race, they're doing the first, you know, the first big movers up and down on the the order, and you've got five cars that are already out, yeah. and you never even yeah. heard a blip on the TV about it. That's yep. that's what I have an issue with. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. The heck was that? What was what? There was a blue thing on the bottom of it. Oh, that's just the thing telling you what connector it's on. Oh, okay. It's one of them high-fangled, high-dollar TV monitors. I, I'm going to bring up... Brian, are you, are you good, or do you want to get going? Because I know you got a margarita waiting for you. Oh, yeah. Well, we're getting ready to go out right now. We're just getting ready to break away. Y'all guys take care. Roger. Uh, hope to see you when I get home. I'll be home for a week uh, during... Um, what is it? Christmas, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, Faith, if Faith is still in the hospital, you have to stop by. You'll put a big smile on her face. Well, yeah, I'll have to stop by and see you and Faith. Uh, Matt, I'll catch up with you. Y'all guys take care. And if uh, I don't speak to you before the you know, holiday season, y'all guys have a great holiday. You, you too, man. Thank take you. care. Thank you. Bye. i got to go, too. But if you want to throw one more question at me, go ahead. His one more question. Him in anyway. Do what? His wife always gives him a hard time. Yeah, I should have been home with him. <laughs> you know, never mind. <laughs> you came down here early. <laughs> um, I, and I'm going to ask you this, and I know you don't follow too much about it, but I'm going to get your opinion because I know you talk to a lot of people. Indy. The IRL deal. They're running out of racetracks. Mm -hmm. They ain't got many places they can go. You just cannot run that fast. I mean, Charlotte didn't want them anymore. Texas, I think, still takes them. Maybe not. That's where Texas the Dan where Weldon deal Weldon. is. No, Weldon got killed in Las Vegas. Oh, oh Vegas. I'm sorry. Vegas. Uh, well, Texas is the original track that was giving them so many problems. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Texas, Texas was Richmond actually reconfigured. Ago, didn't they? Huh? Richmond dropped them two years ago. Richmond yeah, dropped them. Tickets. They didn't get any crowds there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Texas, the original, Texas has been reconfigured to get Indy cars because yeah. originally they they had drivers blacking out running yeah. flat out more than ten laps. In fact, they they boycotted a couple of races yeah. there, or they mm -hmm. scrubbed one. Right. Um, but now we see them running them speeds at Indy. What yeah, but it's a flat it's, track though. Yeah. And there's the no. There's absolutely no way a car at Indy. Uh, not I can't say no way at all. No. They very seldom get up in the air because they're always they're always flat. They got aerodynamics, but when you get the corner on an oval, 
with an Indy car, any little any little bit of air gets under there and you're done. Um, well, you see, it, you see like at Las Vegas, when a car gets down onto the apron and comes back, right. the car is yeah. totally gone. It, it launches, yeah. It's just too much air under the car. They, they've, you know, I don't know why they don't consider, they could put restrictor plates on them because they, the engines are not platable engines, but they could slow them down somehow. Well, there was one thing we talked about before. Take all the arrow away from them. Then they're going to have to lift going into these turns. Well, that's what the new cars are supposed to be like that. Right. Mario Andretti, of course, who doesn't race them anymore, had a great solution. He said, they're not going fast enough. Well, you, need, you need to make it so that three or four guys who feel like they can run as fast as 235 or 40 can do it, and the rest of them run back there with you know among themselves at, at 220 or so. Yeah. yeah. Mario says the problem is that we're we're not going fast enough. But that's, now what that's a radical. Idea. We're not. We're not. He says we're not separating the guys who can do it from those who can't. Well, the guys who can do it, you're looking at a five car field. Yeah. You know. Right. Yeah. So what and Danica they ain't around, one of them either. What happens when they come around to lap the other cars and they misjudge the speed? Well, that's that's a whole other yeah. can of worms. But like I say, it's easy to say that when you're Mario sitting up in Pennsylvania yeah. Yeah. and you hadn't driven one in years. So well, it wasn't too long ago, six years ago, five six years ago, he was testing for Indy. Yeah. yeah. So I well, think you, just you, took so off. So you think the solution might be they only run ovals with but, less than a certain. But the aren't I mean New Hampshire? New Hampshire would be a good place, but they they don't want to go back up there because no. they don't draw any crowd. I think they're running Iowa, which is a five eight. That would be okay. Still yeah, but it's not nearly as fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's it's not Richmond, yeah. Richmond would be okay, maybe. Richmond right, would be. Okay. I've been to a five eight, seven eight. I'm sorry. Yeah, seven, seven eight. eight. I've been to the Richmond, uh, at a Richmond Indy car race, and I could see why there wasn't any crowds there. That was a boring race. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the the track was so small that yeah, you had cars going fast, but most of them were just like moving out of the way. And when there was an accident, it was luckily a fairly safe accident. It was like no drama whatsoever. If somebody cut a tire down and went back to the your favorite the subject, and this will be the last one, I promise right. you. Liar. Huh? Liar. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll leave it at this one because we could go all night. I know it. How do you think Danica's going to fare now that she's doing it full time? <laughs> Write this down. It's going to be live recorded. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm ready for this yeah. one. She'll win a race. You really think so. so? I think there'll be some venue she goes to, whether it's Iowa or whether it's a road course or whether it's somewhere. She'll go somewhere where there aren't going to be any cup drivers. There won't be Carl Edwards next year. There won't be uh, Harvick. There may be, there, there won't. She'll be strictly among drivers within that series. Now, I'm not saying she'll take a race by the throat and dominate and shake it till, till she gives up, but she'll be running well enough with 15 to go. There'll be a wreck. There'll be a caution. Something will happen. She'll end up restarting third, and something will happen, and she'll win one. Because, I, I, see, the equipment's going to be too good for her not to be at least competitive at some point. Right. The other point is, she doesn't wreck very often. No. Well, she doesn't. She doesn't drive into wrecks very often. She'll get wrecked by somebody, but she yeah. doesn't. Yeah. She I, doesn't I, just I, fly in there stupidly and, and crash a bunch of stuff. And I think give her. You give her thirty three chances next year. So. And because remember at Daytona in July, in the nationwide race on Friday night, she was running great. Yep. Because she got taken out with. Two to go, three to go, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, either Mike Wallace, Kenny Wallace, or Stephen Wallace. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of the Wallace or Rusty. One of them got her. Um, and it could be there. It could be at a plate race. It could be at a road course. It could be at Iowa, where you know you may not have any Cup drivers. It could be at Elkhart Lake. They could run at that road course. It could be at Montreal. Um, either way, you think it's going to be a twin ring Motegi kind of yeah, um, she'll she'll kind of evolution. And I'm not saying she'll scenario. steal it. She stole that one. Well, yeah. I don't think she'll steal one. She'll be along the same kind of scenario. You're but yeah, about. she'll be in position. Right. She will have earned the right to be in position. Okay. 
with five to go or eight to go, or whatever, and then things will just happen, and she'll say, "Hey, I ran up front all night," which she might do. Yeah. And she was there when I mean, people have done it all the time. Right place, yeah. right time. People win races all the time because with three to go or four to go, the guys ahead of them went crazy, and these guys just Straight drove through it. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about running with uh, Tony and Ryan in the Cup Series? They'll be nice to her. That's a different. That's, that's a different twelve. Got no daddy money coming in. Yeah. It's a twelve race deal there. She. I don't. I'm not saying she won a Cup race. <laughs> she won a nationwide race. I think. I think she's got uh, the way she's scheduled. She's worked her deal out. I think she's got some of the best teachers there if she takes that advice and uses it right. Well, she and Tony have always been pretty close. So yeah, I think. They, they, I think they she'll. Run. A long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Before, before she ever got so, but I mean, you got Ryan Newman. You know, Junior's certainly going to try to help her out as much as he can. You know, and well, what can he do? <laughs> what kind of well, help is he? Yeah, he you know, what kind of teacher is he? Yeah, there you go. But here's the other thing about Danica. They are going to NASCAR is going to parade her out to every press conference, sure, oh, every public yeah. event, absolutely. every TV interview she can do, every radio. I told somebody the other day on radio show, by the middle of July, we're going to be sick of her. <laughs> yeah, because she will be at every event, yeah. and even now, it, it, at Homestead and at Phoenix, at some other races last year, or this year, this season, they would bring in the Nationwide Series point leader, and maybe the leading rookie, for a pre-race interviews to the media center, and they'd bring her in. I mean, wait a minute, where is, where is uh, James Boucher, or where is somebody? Give, give me a full-time guy. Yeah. Give me a guy who's got a story to tell. Don't don't bring in the pretty lady from Phoenix, who you know. But is she pretty good to interview? Though, she's great. Or? She's she? absolutely great. She. Know, let me tell you what. Maybe more than anybody I've ever seen, she she knows exactly how to play the game. Yeah. She knows when you ask her a question, she'll look right at you and answer it. You think she's only talking to you. She's been groomed at it. Since. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, Absolutely. Since very young age. She knows exactly how yeah. to play the game, and and I don't. I, I I've seen her in situations where it, it would have overwhelmed a guy who was not ready. And is it raining like crazy? I yeah. Guess? It's, yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me? My windows are down. Oh, she, we oh. got to get off the air, Doc. I got to go, folks. <laughs> anyway, get she'll win. Here, she'll win a race. All right. She'll win a race. She will win a race. I'm going to hold you to that. All right. Man, if she doesn't, then I didn't say it, but if she does, <laughs> I told you so. Wow, uh, it is boring. It's boring. I don't like that. Get out of here. Doc! How are you supposed to be walking off, Doc? I gotta go. Well, yeah, Al's gotta go. That may not be down. That might have been a good excuse for me. <laughs> I do need to go home. Al, thanks for coming in. Thanks, thanks to Mrs. Yes. for letting you get we, away. We, we, we would love to have you again sometime. We'll go down to the grill, NASCAR grill or something. We'll get something going. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for stopping by tonight and catching Let's Talk Racing. I'd like to thank all our guests, Al Pierce, Brian Morehouse, Harry Leach, Matt Mullins, and myself. Everybody have a good night. Let's see, where am I at here? I'm all messed up. Yeah, right there. Yep. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunt, driving 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. Let's Talk Racing is brought to you by PC Doctors, Computer Sales and Services. This doctor still makes house calls. And also, Hampton Incredible Tees and Signs, both located at 1248 North King Street in Hampton, Virginia.